Okay, so the next phase that we need to do now is install Eclipse. If you see this uh, video pausing every now and then, it's just to save you time because some of these applications take some time to download, etc. So if we open up Google, we're going to type in Eclipse download. Then what we're going to do is might operate in systems of 64 bit. So you can check that by going back to the system. And you can confirm here that it says 64 bits. So it's operating systems are different bit. Check your bit version and then download the relevant Eclipse version. So if I click download here, and then you're just gonna download it. Save the file. I'm gonna pause the video now. Once the actual program's downloaded, now if you drag it onto your desktop, and it's gonna be the same process just wait for that to load and then what it's going to do is load the Eclipse installer okay so once that's uh, loaded then you're going to click Eclipse ID for Java developers I normally place it on my desktop so just let that install now okay so the installation process can take some time but when it's fully loaded you'll see the launch uh, button here so click on the launch and what that will do now is that will load Eclipse. Okay, so the Eclipse installation files will be located in the following folder. And that will be, in order to launch Eclipse, you're gonna to need to click this icon here. So if I close this and reopen it again, double click, you're gonna see Eclipse install again. So we can leave it on the desktop system. Next thing we need to do is create a folder for actual uh, Cucumber project framework. So I'm just going to label it Cucumber Framework. And then once that's done, we're going to now point to the directory of the Cucumber Framework and press OK. So now we have Eclipse up and running. So the first thing we need to do is we can press close to this. We're going to create a new Maven project. It's not going to be a Java project because the hierarchy and the way a Maven project is structured is a different approach. So let me show you that again. So we go new, we're going to go other, then we can select Maven and we're going to go Maven project. Click next. Next, we're going to locate the directory that we just created, which is this one here. As you can see, press OK. Group ID is going to be the actual domain name of, for example, if you're my one where it's Web Driver University or any URL, we're just going to put it in reverse. So if it's google.com, it's going to be .com Google. Next thing, the artifact ID, we, I just normally call it, for example, Cucumber Framework. If you online, there's many links that explains both of these in more detail. So I'm just going to get rid of this section here and I'll show you what this does now. So if we click finish, as you can see, it's got rid of the domain.com and then .com Web Driver University and just left you Cucumber Framework. I just think for me, it's just easier and more visually easier to look at. So what we've got now in a Maven project, we've got the main folder and test folder, which I'll explain in the later courses in more detail. So what we need to do now is we need to set up many of the configurations to get Eclipse up and running with Maven. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go into Windows Preferences and then we're going to go into, even though I have to remember it, so we're going to go into Maven, Installations, we're going to add a new one and then we're going to call this folder here so we're gonna, sorry, not call it, we're gonna go to the actual location of where we installed or we dropped and dragged Apache Maven. So okay, so we've got that there. So all we're doing now is we're aligning a Maven with Eclipse. So we can press okay to that and press finish, enable that and press okay. So the next thing now we need to do is make a few more changes. So we go Windows Preferences, we're going to go under Java and then we're going to go into installed JREs because this is not pointing to the Java JDK that we installed. So let's go next, 
we're going to now locate the Java JDK which is going to be into this PC and it's going to be under local drive program files Java JDK one important uh, thing this default VM arguments here I'm going to post the link to the, the at the end of this video you need to copy and paste this contents here and put it there so copy that there and press finish and then select the Java JDK press OK okay now if we look at the problems within our project itself you can see the build paths not specified so if you right click on the project you're gonna go properties select the project itself so you go Java build path then we're gonna go on to libraries here on this JRE system press edit you're gonna put an alternative JRE which is the one that we set up previously so press OK finish apply OK so now that will get rid of that problem okay now we need to set up the or align the m2 repo just to make sure in later videos i'm going to explain more about the m2 repo but basically all it is it's a location that when you update your project extracts all the, the files it needs into this one location so what we're going to do is we're going to go on to click your folder go properties same location again and then we are going to add a variable and we're going to make select this one here if it's not visible then you just need to add a new variable you can just create a new variable so you can go configure press new here but you should see m2 underscore repo already there and it's always going to be in your users user account folder called m2 and in repository press ok apply ok okay now just to confirm that we've set up everything correctly if you right click on the pom file here I'll explain in more detail what the actual POM file is in later videos. If we just select install, this is going to try and download the relevant files if it's not already done so. And as you can see here, the build successful. So now our project War Eclipse is pretty much up and running. There's a few more installations that we'll need to do, which will be on the next video. Okay, so I've created this additional add on to this video. If you're getting the following message still and you've made all the correct changes to the Java JDK, so just to confirm that you've set up all the correct settings here, you're pointing to the relevant JDK here, but you're still, when you update, that's when you update your project, such as the following, and then suddenly you're getting the below message, just make sure that in your problem file, you add the following code underneath the properties. So I'll add this code to the course contents. Just make sure that you add in that following code. So if we go here, let me just see the message there. So let me double check that. So we need the plugin, this line of code here within plugins. Okay. And then copy that so we if if this is making no sense to you later when you go on the next section of this course where you're working with maven projects if you made the 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 changes within this this video but you're getting that message there what it's doing we've pointed to the correct java jdk but when we update the pom file the POM file is changing the JDK. So if we add this code in there, in here, and we format this code, so let me just quickly format it, so it's more clearer. What we're saying now is that we're pointing to the relevant JDK, which is 1.8, which is fine. So now if we save the POM file and update the project, We don't get any more errors what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this POM file into the course content so you can copy and paste the code here it's not gonna make any sense yet if you're still because we've not worked on we not moved on to the Maven project section yet but as the course goes on it will make more sense